So what I'm saying is now in today's market where you have strong stock market, a strong real estate market. It's not crash. We're going, we're all, we're all, we're on a depression right now. A, a recession is two quarters of declining growth, right? But a depression is suboptimal growth. So you could have, let's say that your GDP should be 4%, but you're operating at 2% That's a depression. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to succeed during economic downturns while others struggle to keep their heads above the water? Well, today we're diving deep into the mind of Robert Kiyosaki, the man who not only survived the 2008 financial crash, but made billions from it. In his recent posts on X, Kiyosaki warns of an upcoming asset crash. And while that might sound terrifying to most, he sees it as an opportunity, an opportunity for those who are prepared to make millions. So, is an everything crash really coming? And more importantly, how can you turn it to your advantage? So let's get started. You know, today, when I refer to 2008, most people remember 2008. Do you know what I mean? That's when mm -hmm. Lehman went down, Bear Stearns went 38 down. 38% drop. Yeah, they, they all remember it. So the fear today, I think people are a little bit wiser is because they do remember 2008. Mm. I made more money after 2008 than I ever did in my whole entire life because everybody was hiding like little cockroaches. You, wow, you made more money after 2008 yeah. than your entire life. Yeah, so when, you know, here I'm talking about the coming depression, everybody says, oh, you're, you're such a pessimist, you know? I go, no, I'm excited. You know, I get sexually stimulated thinking about all the, <laughs> all the, all the bargains that are gonna be on the street, you know what I mean? I mean, it's gonna be bargains everywhere. To understand why Kiyosaki is so confident in his predictions, we need to take a step back and look at the history of market crashes. The stock market has always been a roller coaster, with highs that make investors feel invincible and lows that can wipe out fortunes overnight. One of the most famous examples is the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s. During this time, investors were pouring money into the internet-based companies, believing that the future of business was online. And they were not wrong, but they were overly optimistic. Companies with little to no profits were being valued in the billions, simply because they had a dot .com in their name. It was a frenzy. But as we all know, frenzies do not last forever. In March 2000, the bubble burst. Companies that were once the darlings of Wall Street became worthless overnight. Amazon, a company that's now one of the most valuable in the world, saw its stock price crash by 90%. It took Amazon seven years to recover fully, and that's a success story. Many companies from that era never recovered. Fast forwarding to 2008, the housing market was booming. Everyone seemed to be buying a house or two, or maybe three. Banks were handling out mortgages like candy, often to people who could not really afford them. But as long as house prices kept going up, it didn't seem to matter. And then the music stopped. House prices began to fall and the whole system came crashing down. The financial crisis that followed was the worst since the Great Depression. But while many were losing their homes and their jobs, Robert Kiyosaki was making billions. How? Crashes make the rich richer. So the bull goes up the stairs, the bear goes out the window. So if you want to get rich quick, I, I like the crashes. Because you can buy low. Oh, shit. it comes down so fast. So right now, if I was a young person, I'd be taking probably a stock options course mm -hmm. to trade the market coming down because you'll get rich faster that way. But nonetheless, the facts are crashes make the rich richer. By understanding that crashes are not just a time of destruction, but also a time of opportunity, Kiyosaki did not panic when the market crashed. He prepared for it. He saw the bargains that others were too scared to touch. He bought assets at rock bottom prices, knowing that they would eventually recover. One of the reasons we have not seen another crash as severe as 2008 is because of the Federal Reserve and its ability to act as a safety net for the economy. The FED has several powerful tools to prevent a complete economic collapse. For example, when the economy shows signs of slowing down, the Fed can lower interest rates. This makes borrowing cheaper for businesses and consumers, encouraging spending and investment, which in turn stimulates economic growth. A notable example was during the 2008 financial crisis when the FED slashed interest rates to near zero to boost the economy. 
However, when lowering interest rates is not enough, the Fed can resort to quantitative easing. This involves the Fed printing money to buy government bonds and other securities, effectively injecting liquidity into the financial system. And the US dollar is fake. Never in the, never in the history of the world has any fake money ever survived. And we're doing the same thing. We just keep printing this money. And when I wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad 20, almost 25 years ago, people said I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, I said, I said savers would be losers. Now, today, there's quantitative easing, which is counterfeiting mm -hmm, money. Mm -hmm. And people are still saving money. Are you nuts? They just printed, I think, $500 billion this year because the repo market is going down. And the average guy goes, well, what's the repo market? They don't know. After the 2008 crash, the Fed launched several rounds of QE, pumping trillions of dollars into the economy. This move helped stabilize the financial markets and kept the recession from deepening. But these tools come with risks. Quantitative easing, while effective in the short term, can lead to inflation. For example, following the massive QE programs during the COVID-19 pandemic, the US experienced a surge in inflation, reaching levels not seen since the early 1980s. Prices of everyday goods shot up, eroding purchasing power for millions of Americans. As inflation remains high, the Fed may find itself in a bind during the next crisis, unable to lower rates or print more money without further exacerbating inflation. So, what should you do if the market crashes? There is an old saying in the financial world, don't try to catch a falling knife. This phrase warns against buying assets that are rapidly losing value because you might end up with significant losses if the prices continue to fall. However, Robert Kiyosaki has a different approach. He sees crashes as a golden opportunity to buy, provided you know what you're doing. All these people who go to school to get a job and they save money, and they invest in the stock market, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. I don't touch any of that stuff. I'm not saying you shouldn't, mm -hmm. but I don't have to. Okay. I'm an entrepreneur. Employees have to save money, get out of debt, buy a house, right. and invest in the stock market. I'm an entrepreneur. I buy the gold mine. I get the gold. Right. Most employees cannot buy the gold mine. Right. I buy the silver mine. I buy the real estate. I buy the hotels. Right. I am a capitalist. I am an entrepreneur. You want to be rich? Don't be an employee. Okay. You want to be rich? Be an entrepreneur. Everything is opposite of what those school teachers will teach you. Hmm. So my poor dad always says, stay out of debt. My rich dad said, use debt. Hmm. See, everything is opposite. During a market crash, the stock prices of many companies can plummet. This does not necessarily mean that these companies are worthless. In fact, some companies may be fundamentally strong but temporarily undervalued due to widespread panic selling. For example, during the 2008 financial crisis, the stock prices of even well-established banks like JP Morgan Chase and the Bank of America dropped significantly as investors feared the collapse of the entire financial system. But Kiyosaki recognized that not all banks were equally vulnerable. He carefully selected shares of strong banks at a fraction of their true value, understanding that these institutions would likely recover when the market stabilized. His strategy paid off as these stocks eventually rebounded, generating substantial profits for those who invested wisely. But there is a risk. If you buy too early, you might see your investments lose even more value before they start to recover. This is what happened during the dot-com crash. Investors who bought into tech stocks when they first started to fall often saw their investment drop even further. It took years for the market to recover, and some companies never did. This is the best investment in the world today. It's called silver. Okay. And the reason I say that is because I'm a, I, I study history a lot. This here is fake money. I would never work for this stuff. It's good as toilet paper. So the biggest investment today is this. This is 35 US. Mm. And I think everybody in the world can afford this today. Mm. And I tell people every day, you should buy this. 
Oh, I save this. You see, they don't know the difference between this is fake money, this is real money. And this here is gold, real money, fake money. So the yen, the rupee, the dollar, the peso, all fake. Kiyosaki believes that silver is the biggest investment bargain right now. But why? Because unlike real estate, which he sees as overstretched, silver is off by about 50% from its all-time high near $1.50 per ounce. But he does not expect it to stay that way for long. Silver is the one of the most widely used commodities in the world, right after oil. It's used in everything from electronics to solar panels to electric vehicles. As the world moves towards green energy and net zero emissions, the demand for silver is only going to increase. Its unmatched conductive properties make it essential for the technologies of the future. Despite this, most investors are still chasing stock market returns and overlooking silver's long proven ability to preserve purchasing power. Modern currencies come and go, but silver has maintained its value over centuries. Kiyosaki argues that it's affordable for most people in some form and that if environmental initiatives drive demand as expected, higher prices should reward patience. So what's the takeaway? The key to making millions in a market crash isn't about trying to predict exactly when it will happen. Kiyosaki has been predicting a crash since at least 2011. And while there have been several smaller downturns and the COVID-19 crash, the overall stock market has more than tripled in value since then. But Kiyosaki isn't just trying to scare people, he's urging them to be ready. When the next crash comes, it won't matter if you didn't time it perfectly. What will matter is whether you're prepared to take advantage of the opportunities it presents. That might mean having cash on hand to buy assets at a discount. Investing in commodities like silver that have proven their value over time or simply not panicking when everyone else is. Crashes are inevitable. They are a natural part of the economic cycle. But as Robert Kiyosaki has shown, they don't have to be something to fear. In fact, for those who are prepared, they can be the perfect time to build wealth. The key is to see the opportunities that others miss and to have the courage to act when the time comes. As always, before making any serious financial decisions, it's a good idea to consult with a financial advisor who can give you advice tailored to your unique financial situation. But if you're willing to learn from Kiyosaki's experiences and prepare for the next crash, you might just find yourself in a position to make millions when everyone else is panicking. So is an everything crash coming? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain, those who are prepared will be the ones who come out on top.